Aliens and shootouts? Or rule-based systems that require logical thinking, creativity and an accurate use of the English language? Why should English and media teachers use computer games in the classroom? Uh, let's imagine for a moment that computer games are the way forward for English teaching and see if we can make that into an argument. First of all, if William Shakespeare was alive today, would he write plays, would he write soap operas, or would he make computer games? It sounds like a silly idea, but Shakespeare's last play, The Tempest, is actually very like a game. It's got a magical fantasy setting, it's got puzzles. I think it would be, with a bit of imagination, quite possible to make an entire English curriculum, with literature, grammar, language, narrative, and everything else you want in there, entirely out of games. Parkside Community College recently became involved in the development of Mission Maker, a computer game authoring tool. With it, they devised a six-week media English scheme of work for Year 8s. As a class, the students conceived the story for a computer game. In small teams, they designed the different levels of that game. There are massive links between English literature and the idea of a game. They're both about language and they're both about narratives. OK, but we've been thinking about games as narratives, as stories, and what we're going to be doing today is checking for and developing features of the narrative in our levels and, and the game as a whole. So each level is a chapter in the story, really. Narrative structure is in the game as a whole, but it's also within each individual level in the same way that you would expect there to be some kind of complication or development within a particular chapter in a book. You also want that to happen in a game. Right down here, evidence or ideas about how you are going to make sure that you've got those essential features of the narrative in your game. And when they get the way gone and then they find the head teacher, that should be the recognition. Our level is the final level where um, we're trying to kill the headmaster because he's the person that's thought up all this idea. And if we kill him, then the school will be happy again. The main focus of putting these computer games together is, the, is rules. They're based on texts, they're based on structure, and they're based on language. And they have a particular audience in mind. So there are usually three things that I want them to, th to think about. So we need to address the reader directly, we need to give commands and refer to what's gone before and what's to come next. Yeah. So give them a flavour of what's gone before. So you say you've collected the key and you've got access to the building. Think about the text that would link level two to level three. How, would, how do you move from that part of the story to the next part of the story? What I want the students to think about is how they then move between the narrative phases. And one of the ways that we can do that in a story is through narrative markers. We can do that also in a computer game through this idea of pop-ups. You reach a certain point and you're given a little bit more information. One aspect of the work we do is with narration. It's a really excellent way of um, asking the students to put down those narrative markers so they have to write and speak in character. And there can be no room for ambiguity. So it is quite challenging and it's interesting to see them recording, reviewing and getting it perfect. Three sentences, nearly. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's three clauses. Yeah. You've got to think about the player listening to this. Which I have lost. Hi, I'm from Parker's School. I need my purse, which I have lost. If you can find it for me, I will give you a key to open the school's gates. I think uh, the female stormtrooper would be good because she looks quite a lot like an evil teacher. Sometimes you need to give students a bit of a checklist as well. So when they're thinking about character, we ask them to think about props character types, the, the eight basic characters that you would find in any narrative and the, the students would, would often use those to make sure that they've included those at some point during their level so usually we're looking for a hero, a villain, a donor, a person who kind of gives something to the hero it makes sure that it, it's not boring, you've not got lots of aliens just being shot at and we're actually telling a story rather than it just being a shoot-em-up game. 
so that will come as well. I, th I think using computer games in teaching it does appeal to girls and boys in different ways. The girls tend to think of the, the, the game, I think, in a bit more cerebral fashion. They're looking at, at the consequences, they're looking at the language. The boys, obviously, are influenced by the, 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 the choices that they can make, thinking about the characters, the way that they can manipulate the characters. You don't get this map in the game. Yeah. You, know, you don't know where you're going. All these different characters trying to kill you. How the girls express themselves in, in the kind of games that they produce, I would say that they're they're less they're less visual their games, but more considered. There's more usually more of a story behind the girls. The boys, it's a bit more a bit more visual. You can see the things. You can see where you are. Uh, they they choose the settings, the characters, so that it's more appealing to the eye. If you're not able to use game authoring software, then you can also use presentation software to show what the levels would look like. And then you can ask students to think about how the levels would fit together, and that's something that they could draft out in groups, or they could use cards to make sure that they're showing how, the, how they would build their, their worlds that their, their games take place in. And you can also get them to think about the rules, the way that consequences of, of a player's actions impact upon certain objects, or if this happens, then that. So how difficult have the staff found it learning to use the software? And how have they employed it in their department? Yeah, so does it, it, My training on the software is a couple of hours and then playing with it and trying things out. And it's a lot of trial and error. It's much easier within a media environment to say, actually, I don't know, and to be very honest with students than to share that. I will give you money if you help me. We've tried not to land all members of staff with lots of new things to learn at once. So, for example, one person might be responsible one year for developing a course which uses games authoring software, um, so that they have time to become expert at that with a number of classes. Um, and they have then got the skills that they can train others in using. I think what makes this software unlikely to suddenly be out of date in, in a few months or, or even in a year is that um, it is, a, it, it is like a kit with which you build other things. It's not, it's not something which has one particular, particular use. What, what we're doing this afternoon is, is experimental. So we're going to be chopping some of it short in order to get through what would probably take longer. As a way of both learning how to use the software and create a curriculum application, James Durren has devised his own computer game to introduce a poem to his Year 10 students. In this activity, children are exploring a difficult poem using gameplay. Um, the poem is My Last Duchess by Robert Browning, which has a strong narrative, but that narrative is all implied. And what the children are doing here is exploring uh, a castle, basically, in which there are clues which gradually unfold the story behind the poem. OK, so we're in, a, we're in a castle, we're on a quest, we're looking for clues, a fairly conventional kind of quest-based computer game. You start looking around, obviously, and you look for places where clues might be. Any suggestions? The drawers. OK, so we'll have a look over here at the drawers. OK, and you see that shows me a camera lens. So we'll put that in the middle, and to take a picture, I press the little Take Picture button, like that. I click on the little Notes button, and I can make some notes. Now, looking at the image, what does it suggest? I mean, start being detectives. What do you see in the picture? Tim? Uh, you see a man um, dressed in a blue suit, um, quite old-fashioned looking. I hope that the value of this activity is that it makes children's introduction to the poem more dramatic, more imaginative, more memorable, um, and uh, suggests that the poem is something to be explored, something to be engaged with imaginatively, rather than something to be analysed on paper. It looks like it's written in the foreign language. Yes. Spanish or Italian? The other map might be a clue. <laughs> is it a translation? Uh -huh. Italy! <laughs> it was Italian. <laughs> I have a feeling that all the fragments of text add up to a poem <laughs> or something. OK. I think it's something to do with her death. Or someone's death, this woman's death. Yeah. Um, we're not quite sure why. OK, excellent. So, death. We want to experiment with this is because it's 
just getting a feel for something which I think is going to be increasingly important in the future, which is children learning and interacting in, in virtual spaces, in virtual environments. You, you may find that that lever has opened something. Aha, there you go. Oh, we might need a key from back there. We won't have the key. Oh, we have a key. Well, what? Yeah. A dagger? Yeah. No, is, that, is, that, is there another door? Can we see another door? I want to go, go up again and see. Is there anything else? What's behind that? Quick clue. If there's a curtain, you might find that the knife helps to get through the curtain. That's my last duchess painted on the wall, looking as if she were alive. How did the students feel about this lesson? It was really fun. It's a really interesting way to learn. And the only thing I would say is it, like, with... Because that was quite a difficult poem, I thought. Mm. And I thought maybe when it said to put notes on, maybe it would give you a few pointers. So yeah. it started you off so and like then you thought... So, like, questions on the notes. Yeah. Yeah. Just think about that would be... That would be useful. Because, you know, I was working with Dad Venus, he actually, he really said stuff about it. And because because he was... He had an, an upper hand on me on the whole control and navigation yeah. thing, he was really... got really into it, which was interesting. Yeah. But it sort of brings out different qualities and different people. You know, I think is... this made a lot of shy people um, flourish, uh, this kind of how it is brought forward, how it educated, because I think they're quite shy of getting things wrong. And um, I think this made them think about the poem and not be so scared as they would if it was just a hand up to the teacher. When you think about it, we were actually like analysing the poem which I didn't really realise we were doing when we were making the notes, which is good. If I think um, it was given to us as a whole poem, we would have missed some things that we would have picked up if it was done uh, line for line. James um, reviews how the lesson went with Anthony. Grinning is, is, I feared that it might just not really work, you know, that it might, they might find it too childish or that they might find just the software too tricky to navigate without, without having practice. But actually, it worked OK. Where children were experienced at gameplay, they, they did so much better mm. because they, they had an intuitive sense of how to find things. They were things. more adept with the curses and the mice. Much more adept just in terms of their dexterity mm. at moving about. But also, they, they knew some of the conventions. There was lots of speculative talk, lots of um, interpretative thinking and talk going on. Certainly some of it, I think, is too obscure. Mm. Um, and probably it would be better if the fragments were shorter. I learned lots from doing it. And it was worthwhile just doing it in terms of the learning that happened in that lesson as well, about the text and, and so on. It's quite possible that English teachers would understand the, the abstract argument for why computer games might fit into the English curriculum, but still be nervous about them because they don't have any personal experience of them. There are quick ways around it as well, of course. You know, they can look at games magazines, they can get kids to bring their own games in and play them through an interactive whiteboard, and they can be the experts. Uh, they, can, they can use trial versions of games they can download from the internet that just give them a little bit to play. There's a lot they can do without having to spend 70 hours playing a role-playing game online. Computer games and other media raise the question about what it means to be literate in the 21st century. Literacy is something we've always seen as a linguistic skill, reading and writing. In fact, it's now become much more than that. Your mobile phone is, used to be about language, now it's about language, video, the internet, photographs and other media. Children need to be literate in all of those media and, and that's why we need to expand into forms like games, films and television.